recording. Uh, hi, uh, so this is Carrie, and I'm uh, coming to you today from the traditional territory of the Champlain and Ajac First Nations in the community of Haines Junction. And my guest today is Joella. And Joella, where are you from? Uh, well, I'm from Mayo, uh, born and raised in Whitehorse, but I've been living in Mayo since 2003. And today I'm uh, calling in from Porter Creek. <laughs> Nice. Okay, and so can you've got a, a Yukon-based business. Can you tell us a little bit about it? What's your business model? Yeah, so I am the Yukon Soaps Company. So I create handcrafted natural soaps that honor Indigenous knowledge, use plants from the boreal forest, and support support communities. So not just Mayo, but also broader broader Yukon community. Uh, I mostly sell to shops throughout the Yukon, and so lots of downtown you know, main street shops, but also cultural centers and, and seasonal gift shops throughout the Yukon. Um, so I'll buy my website too, quite a bit through my website and, and more and more kind of across Canada and um, around the world, really. Yeah. And what have you learned about your business model over the last couple of weeks? Oh, well, that's been hard. I guess I don't really feel the panic yet um, because a lot of the shops are tourist based so generally this time of year I'm just busy crafting creating and getting ready for the tourist season so that um, I can supply all of those shops and so I actually had done a lot of that in January and February before all of this happened anyway so normally I would just be waiting for those orders and um, you know getting ready to fill them so that's not not happening of course right and mm -hmm. so um just kind of hanging out um waiting to see kind of the bigger impacts and how all of my friends that have those businesses um you know how they kind of pivot their businesses and there's a way to support them and then i'm really just trying to get soap to the people because if all of those shops are closed where people generally get their product they're looking to they're looking to find out how they can get soap from me so i am um, definitely busy around Whitehorse and um, you know doing lots of home deliveries which is great and trying to supply the stores that are still open here um, still getting lots of orders across Canada which is so great and um, last week had a little surge of orders from the US which was interesting mm -hmm. um, unfortunately what is a lot harder now is that because we have been told not to travel to the communities if it's uh, unless it's really essential and I have had quite a few orders from Dawson so that means people are having to pay for shipping and that's hard because it's hard to find rides to get things up there so uh, you know try, trying to find kind of community-based solutions for that to make sure people still get soap it's interesting in this time um, having a product that helps with the current health need Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's not like I'm trying to sell, um, you know, jewelry, which we all love and is absolutely essential. But in the time of a pandemic, it's not people's top shopping purchase, whereas, um, you know, people really need soap and they're trying to find the best ways to get it. Um, and so I, I have it and trying to get it out there. Um, to people so it's great lots of people are reaching out and um yeah doing lots of deliveries that way and you've had some you've got like a new t-shirt initiative as well that you started can you tell us a bit more about that yeah well i was just trying to think of you know what what can i do you know i donated um a lot of soap in my community of mayo i've got soap at the store and i was doing local deliveries and i was doing stuff here but it wasn't quite um i didn't really feel like it was <clears throat> enough and so i just started to think about what what the what the needs are and i know people love the t-shirts uh that i do and so i don't know the other day i just had the idea to do a t-shirt that said clean hands dirty mind i mean that's you know we all we all are that and there's so many campaigns out there about washing your hands and so i thought you know playing on the dirty bit and 
and and Yukoners certainly love those kinds of catchy catchy phrases but in the end of the day it's also just promoting the message of keep washing your hands and help to to do your part but I also didn't want to just sell a sell a t-shirt that I wanted to use as a way to um, give back and so in partnership actually with green screen printing downtown able to combine efforts and so with every shirt sold I'll be giving soaps to um, three places in Dawson, Dawson City. Because I know there's a lot of support going to Whitehorse and I've supported uh, Mayo with soap and I know there's lots of effort that's going into Old Crow and I have family connections and strong connections to Dawson too. So um, anyway, soap going to the women's shelter, the men's shelter and the food bank, which is run through one of the churches there. So uh, in the next few weeks, we'll be getting soap up to them to hopefully just distribute to people that they think is needed and people love it i mean the shirts just like are selling so fast which is which is great of course right that people whether they like the shirt because the shirt or whether it's part of the the bigger good or they just want to be part of the the cool club and wearing one of my shirts uh whatever it is it's it, it's great to be able to make that purchase and and support it mm -hmm. yeah it's a uh, i mean i i think i bought the shirt for all of those reasons yeah it was to be part of something and like you know finding these ways of connecting and being together even though we are so distant uh, what have you learned about your customer over the last little bit oh, well definitely people are um cautious and scared right like yesterday um, I mean, I advertise like contactless delivery, which is really hard for me because I really like to chat and visit with the the people that I'm yeah. selling it to. That that's uh, especially a fun a fun part of it, um, especially when I mostly sell wholesale on the White Horse, so to be able to be here and connect with people. But anyway, so running around and just dropping on people's porches and that and their mailboxes. You know, yesterday seen so many homes that have hearts and windows that have lovely little signs. There was one in Takimi that said, you know, thank you so much for coming to our house and delivering. Um, mm -hmm. Please set your parcel there. And it was like, we love you and thank you. And like, it was just super sweet and their window was all decorated, you know, like yeah. everybody is just really coming together during this time. And people are really trying to support local. Like I know that there are people that um, definitely normally buy my stuff, but maybe not as much. And I know because people are amazing on social media these days, people mm -hmm. are giving shout outs and really amplifying um, the Yukon businesses that they're supporting. You know, yesterday, uh, my friend Elena, who also has a business, but she posted that she got my soap and some at kombucha together. You know, what yeah. a great day, right? Yeah. And so that's one business amplifying two more businesses. And I think we're seeing this kind of ripple effect happen throughout Yukon of small business supporting business. And, um, and that's really great. Yukoners are incredible and, um, and really, really generous. And so, um, you know, just seeing how customers are finding way to continue to support and keep their families healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and buy, buying the things that you need, and Yukoners are making it. Um, mm -hmm. I found myself doing that in my in my journal, my like daily planner. I actually like put a little space in there to like what have I bought local today. Mm -hmm. So just like a little thing, even if you know maybe today I can't afford a huge amount, but what can I afford and how can I spend that money for sort of supporting a Yukon business? Just as a reminder that um, you know, because living especially in a rural community, we live in a, a <laughs> when you're staying in your house all the time, you really feel like you're in a bit of a bubble. Yeah, absolutely. That's great to hear that other Yukoners are supporting so much. Um, what has been, as business owners, you know, we, we have a lot of routine or we, you know, think about our, both ourselves and our businesses. So what have been some of your sort of wellness practices that have been an anchor for you in this time? Hmm. Well, it was interesting, kind of the first week that I was here in Whitehorse. And so when I'm back in Mayo, I have a really good routine of running my business, doing my other work that people don't know is I do a lot of um, contract consulting work related to connecting people to the land and community development and community wellness. And, and that work, thankfully, has been, has been stable and hasn't slowed down at all. So when I'm in Mayo, I have <clears throat> excuse me, a really good, a good routine. But when I come to Whitehorse, I always find like my schedule is, is off because it's meetings here and meetings there. And um, I stay at my parents in Porter Creek and so not my own home. So um, a few weeks ago when it, <clears throat> excuse me, really hit, it was like, okay, what am I going to 
do here to take care of myself, get my work done, be balanced, support my family, be everything. Mm -hmm. And I think I started off the first few days, you know, doing online yoga and webinars on how to support your business, all of these things, you know, and, and doing this. <clears throat> and it didn't take very long where that kind of just fell apart. And I really was getting um, overwhelmed, I guess, with all of the different webinars and, and massive emails from people wanting to support when i say people i mean like different organizations because i'm connected to indigenous organizations across canada and all the chambers of commerce and all of these things and everybody's trying to give you information to survive and i kind of had to shut it all out <clears throat> for my mental health right that i was like okay this is too much i need to focus on trying to support my family my parents who are aging and have some health issues um i need to be able to do my work um so that i have revenue coming in and I need to get soap to people. So trying to find that balance, totally admit there have been some days where I haven't gotten outside, where I haven't eaten the best, um, but got through, through some major milestones and, and trying to keep back on track, but, you know, and back on social media and, you know, seeing all these posts about, <clears throat> you know, daily self-care, what do you do to get through and really to not beat yourself up for getting everything done. You know, the one thing that said, if you don't, I can't remember who it was that said, if you don't come out of this pandemic having written a book or learned a new language, <clears throat> it's like, really? I don't, I don't know. That's certainly not going to happen for anybody I know, right? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a new normal and trying to carve that out. But I will say that, like, for me, I worked from home anyway. And so in terms of, like, daily routine, it hasn't changed that much for me. Right. Um, so it's more just, I started also getting up every morning and listening to the prime minister's thing. And I thought, I never thought I would be the kind of person that it was so important that I listened to the prime minister, right? But I was like, those are the two things that I wanna hear. I wanna hear the prime minister and I wanna hear Chief Brendan Hanley. Those are the, my two sources of information right now. <clears throat> but it's easy to get flooded with everything else also yeah like that so like kind of that idea of um letting go a lot of a lot of like those old expectations for how we sort of managed our life and managed our day and kind of embracing that let go which is weird because it's, yeah. you know it, it, like you were saying there's sort of this well if do all these things and create this sort of discipline but i i don't know it's been I, I really resonate with what you're saying. I found a lot of that for myself too, like um, to not beat myself up over what I'm doing and not doing and just be as present as I can for the people who I love and the things that I love to do. Um, yep. And, and to just sort of let go and embrace this sort of feeling of uncertainty that I, you know, is, is here and present, but in, um, in embracing it, I find some strength. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so speaking of uncertainty, sort of what are you thinking about your business model in, in this age of uncertainty as we sort of navigate whatever is coming our way? How are you thinking differently? Hmm. Well, I guess I was about to launch um, a few new products and those are on hold because I'll just need to think about the next few weeks whether this is the right time or not to be, to be launching those. So we'll see. Other than that, I am just going to <clears throat> keep um, keep up with local sales and online sales <clears throat> across Canada. Sorry, and really, there have been. I mean, yesterday I announced that I'm a part of a campaign with five other Indigenous women from across Canada, and so there's a contest going there about supporting all of these women, and they're all incredible. I've bought all of their stuff before. They were all familiar to me, so to be aligned with them is super awesome. And there's also a few um, Yukon initiatives coming out too. So <clears throat> I think that will be kind of my focus is people building and supporting each other that I can't necessarily do it on my own in during this time, but building on the support of other initiatives and businesses as we all try to figure it out. Teamwork, Yukoners, amazing. In Yukon, right? I think yeah, yeah th that 
um, was some of the first advice that we got in this series from Joanne Thomas was like, collaborate, get your, mm -hmm. you know, look at your mm -hmm. relationships, collaborate, look at your business in a different way and, and, um, and, and find your strength in those collaborations. Yeah. And it was interesting because yesterday I was on a call, <clears throat> excuse me, with, um, um, all of the chambers of commerce and, you know, MP Larry Bagnell and a bunch of people from Yukon government. And one of the conversations um, was just about, you know, planning to get through, but also planning for recovery mode. Mm -hmm. So really trying to think like, okay, how do I get through these next few months, six months when shops are closed, but also ramping up because when things get back to the new normal and life opens and we're allowed to shop and go out and support and feel alive again what does that mean for my business and how much will it change so making sure that I have inventory to supply to all of those shops um, and making sure that I'm ready production wise mentally all of all of that and so you know you're kind of planning for two different things at the same time so that's what I'm hoping to do in addition to taking care of myself planning for that and what does that look like but you know i am really really lucky when i listen to stories across canada and from you connors um about not having any income i'm really fortunate that i have other other work to be able to get me through this that my soap business wasn't my main thing it's really important to me to get soap to um and my business is a huge part of my life but you know it's okay i i personally am okay so it's really to me about making sure people get what they need and and supporting you connors overall yeah i think that you know some of the th I, I i think you're right and you know you connors are incredibly resourceful and oftentimes we have multiple revenue streams because mm -hmm. we are very seasonal in nature and how we operate a lot of our businesses and so it's sort of you know, finding some of those, like that balance between the work that we're doing and finding where our opportunities are in some of those different revenue streams. Not all businesses are in that situation. Um, and so then how can we support and encourage and collaborate with some of those businesses to, to help them find new revenue streams or opportunities sort of yeah. in this so that we are strong on the other side of this. Yeah. And I yeah. think it's good for us to be casting our, our imaginations and our visions to sort of what that the other side of this is going to look like. This isn't our forever place, um, mm -hmm. but it is an opportunity for us to sort of reset, think, and move forward. You're, you're one of our champions in that. Thank you. Well, I think it'll be interesting to see um, how much of these partnerships and collaborations and, and, and tools that we have found during the pandemic carry on into, in, into the new normal. Mm -hmm. right to see how much of these new patterns we're making our new ways of thinking because really it's getting back to old ways um so it'll be interesting to see how much of these values and stuff um car carry forward i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so to kind of close out do you have a song a book a podcast something that you're finding a lot of strength in these days that you'd recommend Oh, well, funny. Normally when I, so I spend a lot of time on the road, um, I'm usually listening to business podcasts, but actually I have found, um, the past two trips, I didn't want to, um, listen to business podcasts that I just needed to think. And so listening to music. So who have I been listening to lately? Um, a lot of Leela Gilday, who is from, um, the Northwest Territories. And so, and I saw a live concert of her the other day and Diet. So those two women have just, you know, strength of power, connection to the land and, and that kind of thing. And then um, <clears throat> uh, in terms of the guys, I've been really listening to um, new to me, uh, Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son. Oh, okay. Yeah. So cool. Check him yeah. out. All right. And also Will, William Prince, um, Canadian Indigenous folk musician and uh the other one is xavier rudd who's from australia folk musician and his music just really resonates with me and so definitely my choice of music these days is more chill chill mm -hmm. vibe you know not too not too peppy whereas normally yeah i'm blasting country music as i head down the highway uh, <laughs> but uh which might surprise some people <clears throat> but these days definitely a lot more 
chill, folky kind of music is, is what I need. Mm, beats the soul. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thanks, Joella. Thanks for your time today. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Bye.